My name is Alice Mina. I'm the concept author of the Face Economics platform. I'm here with Miss Catherine Schoonover with um, Modern Republic, and we're going to be talking a little bit about um, her platform in this interview, and also get her to inform our audience on the benefits of the social media platform in the political environment. Um, with this said, I'm going to go ahead and talk with Ms. Schoonover on how she first got involved in politics. So I actually grew up around politics. Um, I grew up in Charlottesville originally, and everything we did there was relating to government in some way. It was, uh, we always liked to joke that Thomas Jefferson was like a neighbor we just didn't see. <laughs> you know, you knew, you know what he talked about, you knew what he thought, you knew what he said, um, but you, know, you never actually saw the man. Um, I think my, my entire family was very involved in politics. My grandparents ran um, their political parties, cam uh, campaign office out of their house. Um, we always went to Monticello for the nationalization ceremonies and you know, rolled up the little um, constitutions and so forth to give to the new citizens and things of that nature. So um, I was involved in it basically my entire life in one form or another. Um, and then I went to school and originally I was going to be an engineering major. And then I got bored <laughs> because they stopped letting us, you know, draw or build things and things of that nature. And then um, I switched to political science. And um, I was very fortunate because right out of school, um, well, first I, I spent about a year um, at the recommendation of one of the uh, congressmen. She says that when she said, I can't she suggested that women um, should get involved in real estate because it was a good way for them to have a you know, solid economic background. Um, in order for them to have more political opportunities. Um, and I hated it. <laughs> I hated it so much that um, I gave away um, a half million dollars in just to get out. And then I went to go work for uh, Senator Ken Sally, who was a you know, friend of mine. And um, I, he was one of those powerful men in the Commonwealth of Virginia. So I was very fortunate because I got, um, I, it was an eye opening experience. I actually got very deep knowledge of how everything worked because he was so uh, knowledgeable and involved in so many different things. And I think if I worked for somebody who was less senior, I might not have had some of the opportunities that I did. You've recently started the Modern Republic, and I understand this is a, a community service type of platform where you want to educate the population on the use of, you know, not just the social media platform, but educating them um, to learn more about the basic tenets of government. Can you please um, kind of elaborate more on, on what got you interested in developing this kind of platform? Sure. So um, as I was working in government, I realized how, how little a lot of people really do know about how our government works and, and what goes on in politics. And a lot of the words that we use, and especially when you're a staffer, you actually you kind of forget that you know a lot of things that people out in the rest of the world don't really know. You kind of assume they know what's going on, and they don't necessarily. Um, and especially if you read in the newspaper, you'll sit in a committee meeting and you'll think, um, you'll, you, you know, you, you watch what's going on, and you read the paper, and you think, were they even the same meeting that I was in? And so you realize just how much of a, of a differentiation there is in knowledge and understanding of what's happening. And um, you know, I actually, I was stunned because a lot of them didn't even know we had a state government at all, um, which is funny because the United States is designed to be state government heavy. Um, but I actually started a couple different things. So um, when I was working in the legislature, you know, we always had interns and so forth for our legislative offices, but I actually started, um, I wanted to make sure that some of the journalism students weren't getting left out of this process because they really didn't get, uh, to get involved in politics in quite the same way, and they really needed to understand it in order to do a good job. And so I started an internship program with them and created this sort of online sort of newspaper. I don't really want to call it that because that implies some different things. I mean, yes, technically, but it had a structure. Um, they literally were sent with questions, and they, you know, what does the bill do? And then what are the, you know, <laughs> what are the two, you know, opposing views on this issue? And so I started with that, and then. When I left the legislature, um, I get, the same issues always coming up. People just don't fully understand what's going on. And that was sparking a lot of the disputes that people were having between the parties and within the parties. And um, I had 
it, it just occurred to me that I really needed to start addressing these issues. And in addition, you were also seeing massive polarization, um, and it was causing massive conflicts. You know, and uh, so I was trying to think of how I could best do something about this. I'm not one. You know, you can't really complain. If you if you if you and if you have the ability to do something, you should do something about it. And I have the ability to do something about it. And so I started to basically write down what I knew, <laughs> and um, I it started out as um, something completely different, and it, it sort of organically is morphing into what it is becoming right now, which is basically a free online nonpartisan political science textbook. Um, and I actually went to teach for a little while. I wanted to get some classroom experience and really understand um, how people were learning and thinking at this stage. And you know, I'm not exactly getting younger. And it's been a while since I was in school, and people think differently. And so um, I've been shifting what I'm doing as a result of that, too. Um, and you know, I'm going to try to put more short videos and things like that. But I just want it to be really simplistic so that anybody who, you, know, you don't have to have to get a college degree just to know what's going on. You know, people argue about baseline budgeting versus um, zero-based budgeting and all these different things. And you know, we talk about revenue streams and all these things. But, you know, most people don't know really anything about that, and they shouldn't have to just go to school to get it. So I wanted you to be able to go and look and see this is what this what means. Um, and I think it's really critical right now, especially with um, what's going on in the sort of political landscape. People are throwing a lot of words at each other. And they don't really know what a lot of those words mean. And people are trying to redefine words, um, which I think is really problematic for a lot of reasons. But it's really important that we actually know what we're talking about with each other. Um, and because you can't really have a conversation with somebody when you're, you, you think you're talking the same thing, but you're not. You have a different definition of this word than that person does, or you have no idea what you're talking about, this, and this person's you know, telling you all these things. Um, so I want to make sure that there, that there was a good resource. And I've actually added, um, you know, actually it's interesting, some, some social media aspects to it. Um, where you should be able to both comment on things if you want to, or um, have it like a job board. Um, as I think it's particularly important for people in politics. You realize that none of those um, resources are really designed for you. Um, a job that's hit, you know, indeed, if in politics, by the time that job has reached that website, it's probably already been filled. Um, <laughs> and, you know, there is no one place. And so I wanted to have one place where political people could go and look at things as well. So I keep adding features as I think of problems um, that I could pretty easily address. Um, as I say, those who can do something about it have the obligation to do something about it. And so it's just kind of, it's organically becoming what it is. So. Great. Well, throughout centuries, the political realm and, and typically government is predominantly a male dominated environment. Now, I see a, 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 a you know, considerably you know, big change to that you know, norm in our political system. We see more women and girls wanting to be a part of the solution. What would be your, um, you know, how would you try to endorse politics to a girl or a woman that wants to get involved for the very first time? I think that one of the biggest issues that women have when it comes to politics is a question of um, self-confidence. Um, and I think it's, especially when you're a young person, it, not even just women, but young people, it's really a question of, of confidence. But I think that women um, Sometimes feel excluded from that process, and you know there there are a lot of historical reasons why they haven't been able to get it as involved. But you know, technology has improved that in, in a lot of ways. Um, but overall, I think it's just important that they realize that, and I say you know, this applies to young people as well, that they realize that they should just simply get out and go and get involved. It's not that hard. Um, you know, if you want to go and get involved in politics, you can literally walk in the door of pretty much any campaign and say you want to get involved. You want to uh, go and walk in the door of your local political party office and you can get involved. You want to meet your legislators. It's actually really easy to do it. They're at a lot of places and they're very accessible um, overall. You just have to you know, kind of pay attention. 
but you should just get out there and get involved and don't allow yourself to even contemplate whether or not you know you can or should you know it's it's you as you're an american citizen it is your duty as an american citizen to have a minimal level of knowledge of what's going on and if you have an interest in politics especially if you have a talent in politics you should get involved there's no reason um, to feel uh, like you aren't going to be included. I, I think particularly for women minorities right now, it's, it's um, an amazingly welcoming environment. Everybody is so interested in getting people involved because they realized kind of uh, finally, so to speak, how long, I mean, how many people have been excluded in there. So they're making a massive effort to include people. Um, but you'd be surprised how easy it is to get involved and um, I think it's also really important to make sure that you educate yourself, pay attention to what's going on around you, and you learn what's going on. I was, we were talking about this earlier, but um, it was kind of funny. I joined the local political party, and um, I read the bylaws. I, before I joined, I wanted to know, you know what I was getting into. I read it like a contract, and um, you know, you're signing on a dotted line. And um, it turns out that I was one of the people who had ever read the bylaws, and so there was the party was having some issue or something. I don't even remember what it was anymore. But, um, and I sort of, <laughs> by the way, you can't do this, and this is why. And I sort of accidentally became the expert on the bylaws by virtue of having read them and remembering some of it. And you just kind of, you get involved in things you don't even expect. And, you know, I had the same sort of um, situation where I was part of the, State party, you, know, you were elected as a representative for your congressional district, etc. And um, we, because I'd also been working in government, I really I had a better understanding of what was going on. And when an issue came up um, that was highly contentious, it was uh, while I, I agreed, generally speaking, with their concerns, they had a plan to do something that was not going to be a good plan. It, it was going to have repercussions they weren't even anticipating. And um, I think if I'd been a different kind of person, I might have been afraid to speak out. I think a lot of women are. Um, and I was certainly probably the youngest person in the room, one of the few women in the room, um, just because you know, a lot of women aren't that interested in it. I don't know why. I love it. It's wonderful. Um, but uh, <laughs> um, you know, they did a, a preliminary poll before they started to argue about this issue, and almost everybody was in favor of doing this. And I was very concerned. Because I knew why it was so such a problem, and so you know, everybody and their brother was standing up and giving their their opinions about it. And I'm raising my hand desperately, trying to get called on. And finally, I was just so frustrated. It can't. This can't. This vote can't happen that way. Saying something about it, and I finally stood up with my hand in the air, um, basically not going to sit down until they called me and explained why you know why this was not going to be a good idea. I couldn't believe I was the only person who was even thinking about it in this way. But the whole vote reversed, um, and I, I have to say I felt I felt very good about having taken that stand, in spite of the fact that I was actually very 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 nervous about it. I'm actually a very shy person; no one ever believed me. Um, I was actually very very nervous about getting out there taking that stand. I think a lot of people thought I was just ridiculous. I, I've had actually a lot of men in both parties suggest that you know politics is men's business and you should go home. But um, and do whatever it is in the kitchen, I'm sure. But um, you know, I love it. It's great. Just get out there and get involved, and don't let anything stop you. You are just as capable as everybody else is. You should have every reason to think that you can participate. The same token, um, do you believe that by women participating in a very polarized environment, in terms of you know, much slinging and things that aren't always relevant? You know, to a, a a person that is just trying to live their lives and you know provide for their families, are, are, are these kind of issues that you see social media, pro, you know, providing uh, a way to to address those message, uh, those issues in, in in politics? So social media is critical in politics. Um, it, it initially it was it was very new and not everybody was on there. People weren't quite sure, but it has become the water cooler. It's Main Street. If you want to know what's going on, if you're not paying attention to what's going on social media, you have no idea. Um, actually, I was writing an article about this the other day, um, where you know, if you just want to kind of get a sense of what's going on in the nation, 
if you, well, I should say, depending on how you set up your social media site, I try to have people on both sides, and I try to get as much of a of an accurate perception um, based on the people I'm connecting with, um, so I know what's going on, not just living my own little bubble. Um, you can then go on there, and you get real pulse of the public. You can practically feel it. Um, you know, people start getting quiet. <laughs> different people are getting quiet. Different people are getting loud. Um, you know, you can. You can. It's interesting. I was. I do this thing periodically where I go through my feed and um, and I look and see. Well, this 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 group here is trying to get me to think this. This is trying to get me to think this. And I I'll communicate that. People need to think about what they're looking at. A lot of what they're seeing is propaganda, um, and it's coming from both parties. Um, but it's, it's a critical piece because you can circumvent the media and go straight to the people themselves. Um, President Obama did this. Um, he had really this amazing um, social media structure where they, um, and they, they, had, they basically had good information coming from the top and then everybody was spreading it really quickly and very well. Um, President Trump is, was doing a very similar thing. Um, the media was, because they're farther to the left as a general rule, I, I can't remember the percentages, but 90, 95% or something like that, um, more to the left than to the right. Um, he just circumvented the media completely and went straight to people through social media. And um, it wasn't just him, you know, the people who were supporting him and things of that nature. And so you had, um, you had this massive ability to reach people and to almost ignore, if you want to, that is, the the traditional structures that are filtering information or telling you what to think. You can go straight to the source. So it's really interesting. Actually, uh, I think YouTube is one of the most interesting because um, you're seeing a lot of information get out through uh, YouTube that isn't even touching the news in either side. It's really very interesting. It's one of the most, one of my favorite parts of social media, frankly. So in conclusion, is there any um, information that you would like you know, the general public to know about the transition and the evolution of the modern republic on the continent and things that they should expect um, moving forward in, within this platform? I think that they should expect it to um, incrementally uh, transition into a basically a free nonpartisan political science textbook. Um, probably heavily based on the dictionary itself, um, because I think that's one of the most critical things um, we need to do right now. Um, basic understanding of what words are, the words that we're using in politics, um, especially now as we're so polarized and people are throwing words at each other um, that they really don't understand. Um, and it, you know, dilutes, it dilutes the meaning of those words. Um, and so I think they should expect that kind of thing. Um, in addition, I've been trying to add on a, um, a job feature so that people can, who are interested in politics and getting involved, even just fun volunteering, um, they have a place to go and uh, actually find those things specifically geared towards them because, you know, it's just not, nothing else is really built to do that, um, at least something that's widely accessible and known about. Um, I think they should continue to, or they should expect to see uh, some more videos. Um, and things of, of like that. Um, but overall, I think we should just expect to see more basic content because um, it's just slowly being added as I, as I go through the list of thousands of words that I have to add. Great. Well, thank you again for your time. Mm -hmm. I appreciate you sitting down with us Anytime. and um, helping us learn more about politics. And hopefully, uh, we can you know, increase our knowledge through your platform and, and yours as well. We appreciate your time. Thank you. And looking forward to uh, hearing more about the progression of the modern republic and how it's going to be influencing our communities and nation and perhaps the world through social media. But I got a lot of thoughts that are popping in my head. Gotta lock it in my shirt pocket. Gonna unlock it for the world to see. For the world to see.